Marcy Otis Warren was born in 1728 in Barnstable, Massachusetts. Marcy was born to Colonel James and Mary Aline Otis. They had 13 children. Marcy was the fifth child. Out of those 13 children, Marcy was the only girl. Most girls at that time were not given much, if any, education. Though Mercy was not able to go to college, she did study with her brothers as Reverend John Russell prepared them to go to college. Mercy loved to read and write and even discuss politics, something very unusual for a young lady in that time. Mercy had a hunger for education and knowledge. She would often attend conventions. Mercy actually met her future husband, James Warren, at the Harvard commencement. Little did Mercy know that the love she had of, for writing and politics would play such a key part in her future and the future of America. Mercy Otis Warren married James Warren in 1754. She moved to Plymouth, Massachusetts, where um, her husband's estate was located. James Warren was a merchant and a farmer. A fun thing that Mercy and her husband would do together was read the newspaper. Not many couples would read the newspaper together at that time. James Warren had attended Harvard and was very knowledgeable. He and Mercy equally shared a love for politics. Though Mercy could not vote or have a political career, her husband was very involved in politics. He was first elected to Massachusetts House of Representatives in 1765. Later on, he would become Speaker of the House. His greatest political achievement was when he became President of Massachusetts Provincial Congress. Mercy's childhood and her husband's career helped shape her into who we now know her to be. While she was a child, she learned to read and write and also grew in her love for politics. As her husband was actively involved in politics, she came alongside of him and became involved too. Now, you must realize she couldn't vote or hold an office, but that didn't deter Mercy. She could get involved in many other ways, and boy, she did. Mercy Otis Warren used her house to host protests and meetings. She and her husband most notably hosted some of the famous Sons of Liberty meetings. With the conflict between America and Britain brewing, Mercy was bursting with ideas and opinions. Fortunately, her husband urged her to write, and she did write. In April of 1772, Mercy helped write part of a play called The Adulterator. Later, in May of 1775, she also contributed to the Massachusetts Spy, a newspaper article. After this, she wrote many plays, including The Defeat, The Group, The Blockheads, and The Motley Assembly. Each had a strong opinion. In The Defeat, Mary exposed Hutchinson for the fraud she believed him to be. She wrote the group to critique Hutchinson and many other loyalists, in addition to Hutchinson. Her plays moved and changed many people. Mercy had a voice and was recognized by many notable people. Through her writing, Mercy changed events in history. One online source even told of how a pamphlet she published called Observations on the New Constitution actually contributed largely to the adoption of the Bill of Rights. Warren certainly affected the history of America. Mercy not only published works, but she was constantly writing appeals to important figures in American government. She wrote letters to George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Samuel Adams, Patrick Henry, John Adams, and John Hancock.
Mercy Otis Warren will constantly challenge and write what she thought in her letters. In one letter to Catherine McCauley, she said, America stands armed with resolution and virtue, but she still recoils at the idea of drawing the sword against the nation from when she derived her origin. Yet Britain, like an unnatural parent, is ready to plunge her dagger into the bosom of her affectionate offspring. Mercy's opinions were not always warmly received. In one of her letters, she criticized John Adams. Then, from that time until 1812, the Warrens and the Adams weren't on good terms. Thankfully, Adams is one of the few people who did not agree with what she wrote in her letters. The other people Mercy wrote to received what she wrote and really valued her ideas. Not only did she affect events in history, the writing of the Bill of Rights, but she affected many notable leaders in, of America. Mercy Otis Warren was the first woman in America to write plays. At a time when many think it was impossible for women to be able to raise their voice, Mercy found ways to be heard. She did not go around protesting, but she worked in the limit she was giving. She did not give up and think to be heard and change things was impossible, but she just went right out there and did what she wanted to do. Through her involvement in political leaders' lives, by writing to them, through her plays, and many other ways, Mercy Otis Warren has changed political history forever. Like many of the people we are learning about in this class, Mercy Otis Warren wanted to change something, so she raised her voice. If she hadn't raised her voice, America would be a totally different country.